Hello YouTube, welcome to Coding with Dom, I'm Dom and this is me coding. Today we're going to be looking at how to debug tests with Nightwatch. It's quite an advanced topic but I think it's something that's very useful to get used to doing on the get-go because you can get lost while you're writing tests, not sure why things are doing what they're doing, so jumping into the debugger and figure out what's going on is going to help you out throughout all your journey with testing in Nightwatch. As always, if you enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe, share it with your grandma, and leave a comment down below if you have any feedback. Uh, if you have questions, if you have doubts, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you out. I'm going to be showing you how to debug tests with Nightwatch, but I'm also going to be showing you how, uh, what process I use to figure out how to do that. Um, my hope is that you could find this useful in the future if you ever find yourself in need of debugging something else. Um, you can use the same process to figure out how to actually debug it. As long as you're working with NPM or with the node modules, uh, this process pretty much applies to everything. So what I want to do essentially is be able to debug this Nightwatch command. Um, so uh, for those of you that don't know it, node has uh, an option when you launch a script with node, let's see if I can find it here, there is this inspect break option. So if you uh, use inspect or inspect brought or inspect break, node runs uh, with the inspector mode turned on, which means that you can debug the node process. Um, by using inspect break, what you're essentially saying is I want you to stop execution on the first line of the program, and then I'll use the debugger to actually play and uh, step over and do whatever else you can do in the debugger. I'm not going to be explaining how the debugger actually works, and if you want to learn more about that, look for Chrome DevTools on YouTube, you'll find plenty of stuff. Um, so what we're going to be doing is finding a way to run node dash dash inspect break nightwatch. Now, if I try to do literally that node inspect break nightwatch, the node will tell me, well, it's going to break anyway, but the truth is it doesn't know what nightwatch actually is. So we need to find a way to be able to extract uh, what nightwatch means. So when I run, when I try to run nightwatch, I actually have it installed globally, which doesn't help for demonstration purposes. But let's suppose that I don't have it installed globally. Node wouldn't know where to find this Nightwatch binary. And the way it works here is that whenever you use a binary in a script tag, it will look for that binary inside the Node model. So for instance, I have Nightwatch installed locally. And that means when I say run test Nightwatch, NPM internally knows where to look for Nightwatch and how to run it. Um, but there is a trick to figure out how where the binary actually is so that you can use it yourself. And uh, the trick is to use NPX. Now, NPX is a module that was recently released called, with the new versions of Node and NPM. And what NPX allows you to do is to run local modules as if they were global. Let's put it that way. So um, I believe I don't have Chrome driver installed globally. So if I try to run Chrome driver, it will tell me command not found. Let's try to run help, command not found. But if I do npx Chrome driver dash dash help, it works. And what npx does is it maps this uh, function to the fu relative function for npm, which in this case is basically nothing more than node modules bin Chrome driver. Now, if I were to want, if I want to know where um, npx is looking for this binary. Uh, I've discovered this trick if you use Mac or Linux, there's a command called which and it tells you where a bin is. So if I do winch npm, the computer is actually running user local bin npm. But if I do npx wix which chrome driver, it will tell me that it's inside the node modules dot bin slash chrome driver. And I can do the same for nightwatch. And that's how I'm going to figure out that Nightwatch is actually node modules slash bin slash Nightwatch. So you can use this trick for any command that you want to debug with node. And so what I'm going to do now is create a new job here, a new uh, script, sorry, which is basically node inspect break. So run node with the inspector and then execute node modules bin Nightwatch. So if I do now npm run debug, we'll see that the it 
runs this command and then it outputs this. This is node outputting this, saying the debugger is listening. If you need help on how to inspect, go to this link. So if you want to find out more about inspector, go to that link. But the easy thing is basically just, you're just going to want to open Chrome inspect in your browser and you'll see something like this. Uh, then all you have to click on is inspect. And what you can see right here is that it's inside the Nightwatch binary right now. So this is uh, file users, blah, 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 Nightwatch. And it's waiting for me to press play. So as soon as I press play, Nightwatch execution will continue. And I can see the console on this console tab. It's open in the browser. It's doing all the stuff that it usually does. Boom. Seeing as I'm actually running Nightwatch under the hood, I can use any uh, command line arguments that Nightwatch normally accepts. So for instance, um, if I were to do, uh, we can see before I was running something like this, npm test, dash 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 tag Google. So this double dash here, if you don't know, allows you to pass arguments to the npm test, to the npm script. So I can do npm run debug and then pass that in and it will only run the Google t uh, test now. It's waiting for the inspector. Let me close this, inspect, play, and now I should only see the output for the Google test and not the output for the other test. Now there are a few things you might want to notice and take note of while trying to debug tests. Um, so I'll give you an example right here. I'm going to add a debugger statement. Um, I'm going to run debug tag to Google. It's going to again ask for me to inspect. I'm inside the inspector. It's running. And you can see that it's stopped on the debugger statement and I can inspect everything. I can see what's inside the browser so I can have a look at the whole API. I can see my selectors, my variables, normal debugging stuff. But if I try to step over, um, what I'd expect, like without looking at it into depth, is that when I step to the next step, the URL will already be google.com advanced search. And by stepping over things, I would expect Nightwatch to have done all of these things, URL, set value, click, URL contains. But the truth is Nightwatch doesn't do that because it has this concept of a command queue. And the command queue basically means that when Nightwatch executes your test file, it doesn't execute everything in a synchronous way. It, it grabs each command and it puts it in a queue on the side. So uh, this allows you to write what looks like synchronous code because you don't see a dot then or callbacks or anything like this. You can chain functions together, but these functions are actually asynchronous. To be able to do that, it creates this queue, it puts commands in a queue. Once it's created the queue, it starts actually executing commands. So if I want to see the website and debug the website in the state after this stuff has happened, I need to use a different technique. I can't put a debugger straight into the code like this, nor a breakpoint on here. This won't work. It won't stop when it's actually clicked on those things. What I have to do is use a client uh, Nightwatch command called perform. So for instance, let's say I want to uh, stop uh, here, we're going to set the language, but we haven't set the last update yet. Or actually, let's stop before the submit button has been clicked. So just to reiterate, instinctively, I would try and do this. Now this won't work. It will stop, it will debug in this moment, but I won't have the browser tab open. It won't have clicked on the various things. What I want to do, instead of trying to put debugger in the middle there, is use the perform callback. And what perform does is it performs a piece of JavaScript, a snippet of code in the context of the command queue, which is exactly what we want to do. So here we can add a function and inside this function, all we're going to do is debugger. Move this, run debug again. We can wait for the inspect. Here we are. Press play. Now it's opening the URL. It has set. Oh, I've lost that. There it is. So what I can see is it's stopped here. And it's in the state that I'd expect it to be in. So let me move this over here, otherwise you can't see it. So we have Elon Musk. Where is it? 
I'm not used to this green screen thing. <laughs> it's Elon Musk over here. We have Italian in past month. So the debugger has actually stopped in the state that we expected. So now I can go ahead if let's say I'm writing a test and I can't figure out what's going on in my page, I can actually inspect the browser while it, the debugger has stopped. So um, this is really handy. If you find yourself in a moment where you're writing a test, you're not sure what's going on, you don't understand the API, or you don't understand why your test is failing, what's going on in your page, I'm pretty sure this is a really good and handy thing to have in your tool set while you're writing Nightwatch tests. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, as always, please leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, share with your grandma, do all this fancy stuff that the millennials are doing. I'm a millennial too, why am I saying this? Doesn't matter. Thanks for joining me. I hope you found this useful. See you soon.